What is going on guys, welcome to a new video. So today then I've got a brand new Facebook ads testing strategy to go through with you guys. If you've been subscribed to the channel then you'll know, you've probably seen it before in fact, every Thursday I put out a poll asking you guys then what kind of content you want me to cover that weekend coming. So this Thursday then I did exactly that. I'll put a screenshot up here and as you can see then the clear winner was Facebook ads testing. So that's exactly what today's video is gonna be about. Tomorrow then Sunday will be on the second place winner which was Facebook Facebook ads scaling. So if you want to see that video then make sure you hit that subscribe button. And that being said then guys, that's the topic. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video and let's get straight into it. What is going on then guys? Welcome to my ad manager account. So the way I'm going to structure this video then is I'm going to start off firstly going through why this strategy actually works. I've got a Google document that we're going to go and actually work through kind of why the reasoning why we have to do things this particular way and why this particular strategy works. And then afterwards, I'm actually going to go through on my ad manager account and actually create this testing strategy so you can see exactly how to set it up yourself. Now, I'm fully aware that some of you won't care about why this thing works, even though I thoroughly or strongly recommend them that you do watch this first bit. I will put a timestamp up here somewhere in the middle of the screen uh, for those of you that just wanna skip ahead straight to the actual uh, creation of this strategy. So that being said, then let's get straight into it. So Facebook ads testing strategy new for 2019. So number one, then before we actually get into the strategy itself, two things you need to consider first. Number one, Facebook ads optimize on the ad set level. We've got proof of both these points as well. And then number two, Facebook recommends a minimum of 50 conversions per week for ad optimization. And that is on the ad set level. So if you've got 10 ad sets within your campaign and each ad set is getting in say, five conversions, even though you're hitting those 50 conversions, not one single one of those ad sets is getting 50 conversions on its own. Therefore, it's not gonna be delivering optimally. And just to prove it to you guys then, I've got Facebook's own business website up here. And the first thing I wanna show you then is this bit here. So this is also crucial to making sure you're getting 50 of the conversion events you optimized for. So if you're choosing purchases then, these must happen within your conversion window. So this is gonna be a crucial point to the testing strategy as well and then the next point as well probably the main point as well um, is that keep in mind that we recommend getting about 50 optimization events within your conversion window per week so what that's basically telling us is that if we don't get those 50 conversions within a week, then our ads aren't gonna be delivering optimally and they're not gonna perform consistently. And if I just show you this next page, then you can see that Facebook states that themselves as well. So each ad set accumulates data. So an ad set, not a campaign. So ad sets optimize on an ad set level. Needs each, so each ad set then needs about 50 of the conversions it's optimized for, so whether that's view content, add to cart or purchase, for Facebook to be able to deliver it with stability and efficiency. Now, as it says there, and it says it needs about 50, the more the better, the more data Facebook has to go on, the better it's gonna be able to perform. So just to give you an example then, if you have 10 ad sets that get five conversions each in a week, I said this earlier, then you have 50 conversions but because they're not all on that one ad set, then all of those ad sets essentially won't be delivering optimally. So what you'll be better off doing is combining those 10 ad sets or combining that, that budget into one ad set to make sure that one particular ad set gets 50 conversions. And that's exactly what this testing strategy encompasses then. So that being said then, just two things you need to consider while going through this, because it will make sense then why I've chosen these particular um, criteria. So to begin with, what, what locations should you target? I always recommend the big four English speaking ones, so the UK, US, Canada, and Australia. Now you wanna separate this per ad set. The reason you don't wanna put them all into one ad set is pure, a couple of reasons really. Number one, the overall audience size will just be way too big. It'll be absolutely massive, and we don't want audiences that are too big to start with, I'll get more into that later. And number two as well, if they're in separate ad sets, then you can make sure that you dedicate an equal amount of budget to each country. Therefore, you can you can give each country its own fair chance and then you can make a better judgment. Um, the results won't be skewed basically. If each country will have had say 10 pound each spent on it. So if one brings in say five purchases and the other brings in two, then you know straight away which one has performed better. Whereas if you combine them all into one ad set, then Facebook is only gonna give 
the majority of the budget to the best performing one so it won't necessarily give each country its own fighting chance so you won't get an accurate representation then of which countries are the most profitable number two then age and gender to leave so leave this as default especially if you're going into a niche where you're not quite sure who your ideal customers are going to be so target anywhere from 18 to 65 plus and then include male and female no interest expansion so that's the little checkbox so i'll highlight it once we go through the creation process um, next point test one interest at a time so what we're going to do is we're going to use um, we're going to flex target but we're only going to go kind of one level deep so we'll have our base interest and then we're going to flex it with another interest and that's how we're going to structure this testing strategy so we're only going to flex with one interest at a time if that makes sense hopefully it does any questions at all obviously do leave a comment down below but all will come clear then when i actually go through the process of creating this strategy within the ad manager next then placement um, again one per ad set for equal budget testing so the two we're going to focus on then is the facebook news feed and then instagram um, moving on then to daily budget this is where things get interesting so what makes this testing strategy unique then is we're going to be duplicating the actual ad not duplicating the ad set not duplicating the campaign duplicating the actual ad and um, we're still going to base it on the whole five dollars per day so it's going to be five dollars i just put dollar sign there to make it a bit more clear times the amount of ads that you want to run so i recommend at least three which will total a daily budget of fifteen dollars obviously the more the better and i'm going to explain why later in the video because well to basically the more the higher percentage of an audience we can test then the better results and more accurate representation we're going to get of whether that audience is actually a successful one or not and the pros then of having a higher daily budget and actually duplicate duplicating on the ad level is that number one we have a higher budget than everyone else everybody talks about the whole five dollars per day so if everybody's doing five dollars per day and we're spending at least fifteen dollars per day then at the end of the day facebook is a bidding market so if we've got a higher daily budget then we should get in theory better results than everyone else because we're showing to facebook that we're willing to spend a bit more money and we'll also be outbidding everyone else and if the majority of people test on a five dollar daily budget and we're using fifteen dollars then we're going to be able to outbid people and therefore we should get the pick of the bunch when it comes to the customers also we get better ad optimization going back to that original point of um, facebook ads optimizing on an ad set level if we're spending more money per day there's going to be more data coming in for that one particular ad set and therefore it's going to optimize better and deliver more efficiently moving on to the next point then so seven day click or one day view the fact that we choose seven day click means that anybody who clicks on our ad and then purchases within seven days they're going to contribute and count towards those 50 conversions whereas if it was only a one day click then they click on your ad but then they buy two days later they don't get counted towards those 50 conversions so therefore it takes longer to actually optimize um to actually optimize the ad set because they're not included in that 50 if that makes sense and then the final point is our bid strategy which we're going to leave at lowest cost and the reason we do this then as it says in brackets use target cost when scaling is because we're testing we want to know we want to see what the actual lowest cost is that we can achieve purchases for this particular product because then that's going to give us a gauge of whether it's actually worth scaling and then once we do move into scaling we use target cost because then that way we can take to facebook this is how much we want to pay roughly per purchase so as we scale up then try and stick as close to that as possible so that being said then guys that's the strategy hopefully it all makes sense so what i'm going to do now we're just going to go back into my ad manager account and i'm just going to build one out in front of you so you can see practically how this strategy actually works so to start with then i'm just going to go ahead and click create new ad set uh, looks like i was halfway through so let's click continue um, in fact let's go right back to the beginning so objective wise then i always start with conversions now to be honest with you as long as you've got a, a strong product and you put it in front of the right audience then you can always start with conversions because with conversions comes everything else and what i mean by that then is that for somebody to make a purchase on your store they have to become part of your traffic it, they have to view content they have to add to cart they have to initiate checkout so as long as you've got a strong product put it in front of the right audience, then everything else will come um, along with it, if that makes sense. So moving on to the actual ad set level then, 
uh, your pixel name will be in there. Obviously, now the reason mine is called that is because I've got a few different ones, so I just name them to make sense to me, relevant to the right stores. Um, conversion event wise now the reason that's like that as well is because I I have a store that sells multiple niches so I set up different custom conversions um, hence why it's called that so as long as you're only advertising one niche at a time then just use the standard purchase conversion event moving down then into the first section which is locations now what I'm going to show you is setting up just kind of one ad set, one particular ad set. But if you want to get a bit more advanced and create multiple ad sets at a time, then what you do is you scroll to the top to get rid of this annoying message as well. And then you can click create multiple new ad sets. And what that allows you to do is pretty much self-explanatory, just create multiple new ad sets and you can split test everything and essentially set everything all up in one go. But I'm not gonna go into too much detail in this video because I have done a specific video on that topic actually. So for this example of this video then, we're gonna leave it as UK, age and gender stays as default. And then this is where we get into the actual targeting section of our strategy, which is this section here. So one interest at a time and no interest expansion. So what that means then is make sure you unclick that. Therefore, that means that Facebook is only gonna target people that are included in our detailed targeting section. So what we wanna do then is make sure that we're only targeting one interest at a time, but we're gonna flex it by one level to make sure that we're targeting the most focused section of our audiences as possible. So just as an example for you guys, if we're in the dog niche, then I always use it as an example on this channel. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna use dogs as like the base interest. But as you can see, the potential reach is still 15 million people, which is actually huge. We wanna make this a lot smaller purely because if we've got a new pixel in a new niche then for us to go out and advertise in an audience that's 15 million people and spend in 20 pound per day then as you can see our daily reach is anywhere from 1k to 8k so to spend 20 pound I'm not sure what that works out percentage wise, but it's probably like 0.001% of this overall audience. So the chances of actually finding people who are going to purchase our product within that potential reach size is very, very, very absolutely tiny, purely because our pixel is not matured. It's not optimized. It doesn't know who our purchasers are. So essentially it's going to go out and show our ads to random people until people start to take notice of it and start to engage with it. So to begin with, we have to flex down to make this number even smaller. So what I recommend then by flex is by flexing by at least one level. So if we click narrow audience, we can put another dog interest in here then to essentially bring this potential reach down. So I'm just gonna use dog today magazine because it's one I use quite a lot. Um, and select that and see what that does to our potential reach. So it brings our potential reach then down to 61,000 people, which you're more than happy with. I recommend if you're testing one interest at a time, then try and get your audience below 300,000 people, just because that's small enough to adequately test or get an idea then of whether your product is gonna work or not. Now, a lot of people will say there's not enough scale, not enough room there to scale it, and you'd be 100% right. But what you're forgetting is that to begin with, um, our pixel is not gonna be very well matured. So we have to do this to build up the traffic, build up the purchases, that's gonna mature our pixel. And then once our pixel is matured, once it knows what and who our ideal customers are, then we can just get rid of dogs today, go back to 15 million people, and Facebook will know who our ideal customers are. So now it can go out and actually find those people within this audience of 15 million people, whereas to begin with, it won't be able to do that because it won't know who our ideal customer is. So essentially then, we have to do the targeting for Facebook ourselves to begin with until we've matured our pixel. Any questions on any of this at all, then obviously please do leave a comment down below so I'm just gonna fill this back in again dogs today magazine now the reason magazines work so well is because for anybody to be subscribed to a dog magazine they would have to be pretty crazy if they don't own a dog so um, it pretty much just tells you straight away that people within this audience own dogs and therefore they're gonna be interested in a dog product moving down then into placements make sure you hit edit placements and then start off by just getting rid of all of them and then just select the ones we want now the two we're going to be focusing on then are the facebook news feed and the instagram news feed as well but what you've got to remember is that we're going to split test these in two different ad sets now the reason we don't combine them then is because facebook is going to 
optimize our budget into the one that it thinks is working the best. But to begin with, what I recommend is devoting the same amount of budget for each one. So each one gets its own fight and fair chance to to produce the results basically. And then once you know which one produces the results, then just focus primarily on that one. So this particular ad set then I'm setting up for the sake of this video is just gonna be in the Facebook news feed. Um, all mobile devices, that's fine. Now, daily budget, what I'm gonna do is, as it said in the strategy, I recommend um, using at least three. So I'm gonna put the daily budget then to 15 pounds. We're gonna use conversions, we're gonna use seven day click or one day view, and we're gonna go for the lowest cost as well. So that's pretty much our ad set set up. Moving on to the actual ad section, um, of this campaign. So now this is finally loaded up then. What the default screen you will see then is this one, which is the create ad screen. Um, but what I recommend doing then is using an existing post. Then that way, every time you run ads to a particular post, all that engagement, comments, tags are all gonna build up on one post. And therefore, when that accumulates, you'll build up the social proof. And the more social proof you have then, the more likely people are to engage with it as well and actually click on it too. So choose your ad then, that's not the topic of this video. So um, I've done plenty of videos on ad copies and everything, so go out, do your research on that. But once you've got your ad done all set up, so this is just an example one then for this video, um, go ahead and just click confirm, place your order. And then once this confirms and takes you to the next screen, uh, once it finally loads. So now this is finally loaded then, as you can see, we're back in my ad manager account on the ads level. This is the one that we just created. And what we're gonna do now then is just duplicate this. Uh, we can call it, we can leave it in the same campaign, uh, we'll leave it in the same ad set, and let's create two copies, click duplicate. And then once this finally loads, just go ahead and click publish because essentially we want to keep everything the same. All we're doing is duplicating the ad. So we're running three ads under one ad set essentially. So let's close this down. So as you can see then what we've got now then is we've got three ads under one ad set level. And what this is gonna do then is it's just gonna basically allow us to test an audience um, more adequately than just using one ad for a number of reasons. Number one, we're using a bigger budget. Therefore, we've got better bidding power against other people. Number two, our ad sets are gonna optimize better than just using $5 per day. And number three then, by using three different ads, especially this works really well as well for larger audiences purely because if you're going out with one ad, then obviously Facebook is gonna choose a certain segment of your audience to show your ad to. And if that certain segment doesn't react well to your ad, then you might leave that audience thinking that the audience doesn't work and it's either the audience or your product. Whereas if you've got three or five or even 10 different ads, Facebook is gonna go out and show those ads to five, to three, five or 10 different segments of that audience. And then you can see which ads are returning the results. And then once you've done that, once you've let it run for a day or two, you can close down the ones that aren't performing very well. And then Facebook will start to put even more budget into the ones that are performing well. So that being said then guys, that is the whole testing strategy from start to finish um, I would love it if you guys actually go out implement this and come back and let me know what kind of results you've been getting I've been using this a lot especially when scaling ad sets and it's been working really well for for me um, in fact I haven't done a with proof video for quite some time so maybe if you guys want to see it of course I tend to go on whatever you guys recommend if you guys want to see it, I can do another with proof video I'll actually show you one of those ad sets where I implemented this strategy so you guys can actually see the kind of results I've been getting um, and that being said then, hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you guys are still watching. If you are, then hopefully you enjoyed the video. Otherwise you wouldn't be watching this far. And if you did, then please do leave a like. That's all I ask. Um, and that being said, any questions at all, make sure you leave a comment down below. I assume we've covered quite a lot. Um, so there's probably gonna be tons and tons of questions, but I do get back to every single person. So feel free to spam as many as you want down below in the comment section. Um, and that being said, then I'm gonna stop talking now. It's nearly, it is just gone three o'clock in the morning. Um, so that being said then guys, have a great weekend and I'll see you all tomorrow for Facebook ads scaling.